Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this right here is a very typical elliptical galaxy. But this one is quite unique. It's probably the most famous elliptical galaxy ever. This is a galaxy known as M87 or Massey 87. A galaxy that back in 2019, or actually pretty much exactly three years ago from when I'm making this video, became extremely popular for one single reason. The reason you're going to see somewhere in the middle very very soon. You probably already know what I'm talking about. This was the galaxy where the team behind EHT or Event Horizon Telescope revealed the first ever image of a supermassive black hole in the center of a galaxy. A huge revelation and actually a huge scientific achievement. Well, for many years EHT was actually doing a lot of other releases we've discussed in some of the previous videos, but about a week ago from when I'm making this I got in an email. Actually, an invitation. Normally these emails would be like a press release or some kind of an explanation or maybe some hints on what's happening. In this case, the only hint was come and visit our streaming event on May 12th and the link was uh, for the stream itself which is also in the description below. We all know what it's going to be about, or at least we think we know. And we all kind of expect it to be another image, another really massive black hole. But this time the one we've been waiting for for many years the one in the middle of our own galaxy, Sagittarius A star. Okay, let's back up a little bit and let's actually briefly discuss what all of this is and how all of this works. Mostly because some of you might not actually know what I'm talking about. So first of all, HT or Event Horizon Telescope is actually not just one telescope. It's a telescope array network consisting of multiple different observatories located around the planet, all with very powerful radio antenna and essentially creating a kind of a single planet telescope. So it's basically a kind of an international collaboration that has been in existence since 2009. But for the first few years, HD wasn't really doing a lot of observations. Most of the initial papers and initial releases were all more or less theoretical. A lot of simulations, a lot of potential discoveries, and of course a lot of assumptions of what we're actually going to be finding, including what a potential supermassive black hole might look like. For example, here's a prediction from 2017. This is what they believe they're going to discover by combining all of the data from these telescopes. And as we know today, they weren't really that far off. The actual image that was produced later on was more or less similar. And this particular technique today is known as the VLBI or Very Long Baseline Interferometry. With the idea of course being really simple. Take measurements of a certain point in the night skies, including the time when these measurements were taken. And then by using a lot of data processing, combine this into a single image. Which by the way was the most difficult part of all of this. Getting the data was not as difficult, but creating an algorithm and processing everything, creating the image at the end, took scientists a few years. And during the initial announcements in 2017, 2018 and later 2019, a lot of people and actually a lot of scientists thought we're going to be getting the image of Sagittarius A star and not actually M87. As a matter of fact, it was always believed that this is going to be the first black hole we're going to be imaging. Naturally because Sagittarius A star is in our own galaxy and it's the one that we're super curious about. But when the image that we received was not of this black hole, but the one in M87, the explanation kind of made sense. Because this black hole is so much more massive, it's like a thousand times more massive than the one in Sagittarius A star, everything around this black hole moves much much slower. Whereas everything around Sagittarius A star generally is going to be a lot more hectic and have a lot more motion including the motion of the accretion disk. And for this reason it's actually kind of more difficult to image this black hole because it's going to be producing data that's not as useful. A good example here would be long exposure photography. If you take a picture of something that moves really fast using long exposure, it's generally going to be really blurry. Whereas if you take a picture of something that's uh, moving a lot slower using the same long exposure, it's going to be much clearer and much more crisp. Here's a good example of what a freight train looks like when the picture is taken using long exposure and the actual object moves really really fast. I mean in this image alone it's very difficult to tell that this is an actual train. And likewise, by looking at a black hole using radio telescopes for a very long time, if there's a lot of motion in the center, it's going to produce a lot of blur and a lot of sort of useless data. Which is why M87 was the first release and was a relatively successful release as well. But even here you can see that there is quite a lot of blur, because even after data processing, a lot of detail was still lost. But in the last few years, since the original release in 2019, 
there was quite a lot of improvement and quite a lot of advances in EHT. So for example, right now, there are nearly 300 different members and 60 institutions participating in these studies. And since then, the collaboration was actually able to produce a lot of really exciting images. For example, here's an improved image of M87 that actually shows us the polarization of the accretion disk. In this case, indicating that this is an extremely magnetic environment and helping us understand how the magnetic forces very likely feed the black holes and cause a lot of other unusual interaction that we previously did not know about. Then, in April of 2020, a year later, the team also released the images from a very well-known blazer known as 3C279. In this case, showing us extremely bright components of the astrophysical jets that create a phenomenon known as superluminal motion. Here, they actually appear to be moving approximately 20 times the speed of light. Although in this case, it's actually an illusion because of the angle of observation. Something that I've discussed in one of the previous videos that should be in the description. Then, a year later, in 2021, we've talked about this other release from the EHD of essentially the highest ever resolution images from the Centaurus A galaxy extremely close to us. With the images being roughly around 16 times sharper than any previous images of this particular region, presenting the scientists with one of the most detailed images of the actual astrophysical jets from a center of a typical active galaxy. And in this case, it was this unusual corkscrew shape that once again suggested that there is quite a lot of magnetism involved here, and a lot of this is causing the astrophysical jets to change their shape. The video about this is somewhere right there or in the description. And now, a year after this, we got this hush-hush announcement about something else. About something that we're not told about. Something that's very reminiscent of that 2019 invitation to the press conference, when the scientists revealed the M87. And I'm sure almost everyone now believes that we're about to see the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. In other words, we're probably going to be getting another image, maybe something similar to this, that might finally put an actual face on whatever is happening right there in the middle. This right here was actually an image created over a period of approximately 20 years by observing the motion of different stars in this region. And so today, a lot of scientists are pretty certain that we know exactly where it's located, we know exactly what its mass is, approximately 4.3 million masses of the Sun, but we still don't really know what it potentially looks like or what sort of features it has around it. With all this hopefully changing after that May 12th announcement. And the thing is, whatever it is, they're definitely making a huge deal out of this, so it's most likely going to be the black hole. It's unlikely to be anything else. Okay, maybe aliens, but um, HD is not capable of looking for that. And assuming that they do show us what the black hole looks like, I'm actually super curious to find out how they solve the problem of very fast motion. In other words, what exactly did they do to try to solve the problem of things moving so fast that a long exposure shot would just not really reveal anything here? And my only guess right now is that they probably learned a lot from this image right here. And also the image from the Centaurus A where things are moving really fast as well. And so chances are they probably combine the data processing from both of these techniques and are probably going to be producing something that's very similar to what you see here, but my guess is that it's under different orientation. As a matter of fact, this was almost directly pointed at us, with the M87 jet that you see being almost directly pointed at planet Earth, just a few degrees away from it. But for our own galaxy, that's not really the case. Here, we'd probably be seeing it from maybe this angle right here. So we're kind of looking at the astrophysical jets as if they were perpendicular to us. And the accretion disk is more or less edge on. And so whatever image is going to be produced from this is going to be really, really interesting to see. And if I were to just sort of speculate and take a wild guess, I would actually say that it's probably going to be somewhat flat in its appearance, with one edge being extremely bright and one edge being extremely dim potentially resembling the image that was created by Jean-Pierre Luminet back in 1979 that looks sort of like this. So maybe, just maybe, it's going to look something similar, but also maybe completely different. And so in that sense, we're just going to have to wait until May 12th. And if you've already seen it, well, cool, right? Awesome image. Anyway, on that note, well, I guess that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. It's a really big announcement, it's basically the biggest announcement since 2019, and once again it's going to hopefully create a lot of really good science and a lot of really exciting opportunities for future studies. 
But until we see the image or until future studies, that is it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the channel on Patreon by doing general membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.